Hi, I'm Subha and in this video we'll talk about how you can get rid of the waste sitting inside your body. In other words, give your internal body a bath. Once that happens, you'll automatically lose weight, have clearer skin, greater energy and much more mental clarity. Before we move ahead, let's discuss what happens to your food after it leaves your hand and enters your body. You may already know that first it goes into your stomach where it's broken down and then to your intestines and then it's finally excreted in the form of waste. But do you think that every food takes the same amount of time to finish this cycle? Of course not. Fruits take about 3 hours to digest and eliminate. One hour in your stomach, one in small intestine and one in large intestine. Vegetables take a little longer, about 6 hours. What about grains, which basically includes wheat, rice, lentils, beans, any idea? They take 18 hours to digest and eliminate. Now, of course, these figures are just estimates to give you an idea, but basically, less the water in a substance, harder it is for our body to digest it. Now, grains take 18 hours to pass through your system, and most of us are eating them three or maybe four times a day, meaning, even before the last meal was digested, we throw in more food to digest and quite naturally, the last meal is left undigested. It does not exit our body through stool. It rots and ferments and decays inside. It grows moles, viruses, fungus inside the intestines. Have you heard those creepy stories of tapeworms being found in people's intestines? Of course, those people didn't eat tapeworms, so how did they get there? through the rotting, undigested food sitting inside the colon. You might have heard the saying, you are what you eat. True, but more importantly, you are what you ate. That burger you ate a year ago might still be sitting inside you. Stuff like bread, cheese, all these namkeen, snacks, biscuits, tea, coffee, fast food, sugar, and mostly everything that does not directly come from Mother Nature is extremely difficult to digest and eliminate. It sticks to the walls of our intestines and forms a thick coating. This is how our intestines look. They have millions of tiny finger-like projections called villi. When we eat these unnatural dead foods, they stick inside our intestines in the form of waste. Over the years, this waste forms a thick coating on the walls of our intestines. The villi absorb whatever that is stuck to it and transport it to the bloodstream. And from there, it's delivered to each and every cell of the body. Now imagine, if there's rotting dead waste sticking to our intestines, then automatically that's what the villi absorb and transport to every cell. Naturally, this waste surrounds our organs, blocks their functioning, and we call it disease. If it sticks to the layers in our skin, we call it acne, eczema, psoriasis. If it forms a stone in the kidney or the gallbladder, we call it a stone. What about excess weight? If you want to lose the waste, you gotta lose the waste. If it accumulates in the ovaries, we call it a cyst. And here comes problems like PCOD, menstrual disorders. If it sticks to our intestines, constipation, and constipation is the mother of all diseases. If this waste gets stuck in the airways, making it difficult to breathe, we call it asthma. If it forms plaque inside our artery walls, we call it cholesterol. Today, this waste might have manifested as a small problem, but if we don't clean it up, tomorrow the same waste will take a much more destructive state, like a tumour or a cancer cell. So, by taking out this waste, these toxins, disease is automatically cured because no disease can survive in a body that's clean internally. Now, if you're not healthy, you know, if you're overweight or constantly popping pills or having to go to the doctor every third day, then we're truly not experiencing life to the fullest. This human body is Mother Nature's precious gift to us. Soon, we will return it back to her. In the time we have, it's our duty to keep it clean, bustling with energy and health, the way that she's designed it to be. If you put in diesel in a car that was meant for patrol, it won't work. To make it work again, you first need to take out the diesel and then put in the patrol. Same with us. Our body was meant for this, but we accidentally fed it with this. 
no wonder it's not properly working. So step one is to take out the bad stuff, the waste. And step two is to take in the good stuff, the right food. Ayurveda says, if your food is wrong, medicine is of no use. If your food is right, medicine is of no need. In this video, we'll cover step one. In the next, we'll cover step two. So please watch this video till the end so you don't miss out because I'll share with you exactly what you need to do. The number one thing you need to start doing is intermittent fasting. See, the healing power that will remove the toxins, cure disease and make you lose weight is sitting inside each of our bodies, not in a pill or a vaccine or a drug. The doctor that cures you is inside your body. And by intermittent fasting, you let this healing power do its work. And there's proof for this. When you break a bone, a plaster is placed on your arm to keep it in place, to give it rest. In a few days, the bone will automatically join itself. It's not like there's some medicine in the plaster. So what is that power that joins the broken bone? It's your healing power. When you get a cut, even if you don't put a band-aid on it, in a few days, it automatically stitches itself back together. So what is that power that stitches this cut back? It's your healing power. This healing power is an enormous, magnificent power of Mother Nature. If it can join a broken bone, can it not break stones, lumps, cysts in your body? Can it not remove these toxins? Can it not cure diabetes, blood pressure, obesity or arthritis? Of course it can because the healing power doesn't know what your disease is called. These terms are given by doctors. Once the healing power starts fixing, it fixes everything no matter where it's located, no matter how long it's been there. But there's a little problem. We never let our healing power do its work. We constantly keep interrupting it. We keep diverting it. We keep disturbing it. You know how? By always eating. As soon as we eat something, this healing power leaves whatever it was doing before and starts digesting and eliminating our food. So the healing stops and the process of digestion begins. Unfortunately, we're constantly eating three, sometimes four times a day. Our healing power is always digesting. We have two slices of toast for breakfast. Before that was digested, we put in a bowl of rice for lunch. Before the rice was digested, we put in two more chapatis for dinner. So the stomach is constantly working 24 hours a day, seven days a week, never getting a break. It's no surprise that it will not heal. And it's no surprise that people are more sick today than they've ever been before. They're always eating. If you want this healing power to do its work, you must from time to time give digestion a break. We suggest that you give a 16 hour break to your stomach every night. For example, if you eat dinner at 8 p.m., eat nothing till 12 noon the next day. At 12 noon, you have your first solid meal of food. What you're basically doing is that you're fasting for 16 hours every day and eating in an eight hour window. It's called intermittent fasting. In the morning, before noon, you can take easily digestible liquids such as coconut water or vegetable juices, but no fruit juice, tea, coffee or milk. Now this is much easier than it sounds because most of the time you're not eating, you're sleeping. Fasting might seem abnormal to us at first, but actually this is how Mother Nature has designed our bodies. Our hunter-gatherer ancestors didn't have supermarkets, refrigerators or food available all year round. Sometimes they couldn't find anything to eat and our bodies have evolved to be able to fast. If anything, fasting from time to time is more natural than constantly eating four times a day. What hours you want to fast, that's totally up to you. Some people find it difficult not to eat food until 12 p.m. but find it easy to eat their last meal of the day at 6 p.m. In this case, you could fast every day from 6 p.m. till 10 a.m. the next morning, whatever fits your schedule. Through daily 16-hour fasts, your body gets a chance to do a little healing every day. And if 16 is too much, don't worry. In the beginning, start with 14 and then stretch. That's okay. You might already be doing 12 hours of fasting. It's not that difficult. Let's say you have dinner at 8 p.m. and your first solid meal at 12 p.m. the next morning. Your dinner, if healthy, would probably get digested in six hours. So from 8 p.m. till 2 a.m., your digestion hours are going on. 
as soon as the healing power is done digesting your food what does it start doing it starts healing so the next 10 hours will be your healing hours this is when it rebuilds tissue fades away old scars replaces old damaged or dead cells in your skin it dissolves stones in your kidney and gallbladder removes extra fat from your cells breaks cysts fibroids and regularizes your hormones cleans your intestines removes the mucus blocking your airways and clears the plaque in your arteries your healing power goes into the depths of every organ and pulls out the toxins lying there and pushes them out of your body through stool urine sweat and breath now it's also very important that your dinner is a light meal we suggest having a salad or a soup if you eat a heavy meal full of grains like chapati rice or lentils it would take more digestion hours leaving you with little or no healing hours here's the diet we recommend coconut water ashkar juice or any other fresh vegetable juice in the morning 2 hours later have breakfast in which you can have a big platter of fresh seasonal fruits for lunch have grains sabzi chapati or brown rice or quinoa for dinner have salad or a soup If you feel hungry in between have coconut water or fresh grated coconut. I've made videos showing some amazingly healthy recipes. Watch my recipe playlist by clicking on this box. Point is to have grains just one time a day. Also, do not overeat. Too much of a good thing is not that good. Always leave your stomach a little empty. So when I first started following this, I made the mistake of thinking, oh, I'm eating all this healthy food and salads, so I can eat as much as I want. So even if I was eating salads, I used to stuff myself to the brim, and ultimately I wasn't getting the results that I was wishing for because even though I was fasting, I wasn't getting any healing hours. Of course, soon I corrected my mistakes, and after that, it was. a miracle i cured my pcod thyroid hair fall in just 3 months without any medicine the speed of how quick you recover from a disease or how much weight you lose is proportionate to how many healing hours you give to your body if you're fasting 16 hours every night in one week you have given about 112 healing hours in one month about 450 healing hours in 3 months about 1500 healing hours and in 1500 healing hours all chronic diseases diabetes cholesterol pcod can be cured from the root if you are young or if your problem is not that old it would probably take you much less time than even that just make sure you also follow the diet that i've suggested this formula is an estimation it varies from person to person age to age but the principle stays the same day after day people come to me they start fasting they follow this diet and 98% of the time just about a month or two later they tell me that they've cured their health problem that they came with their weight has reduced their skin has become clearer and all of this even after giving up medicine in case you don't get the result please send me an email at this address i will personally get in touch with you and we'll figure out what might be going wrong mother nature's powers are infinite recently they even made a documentary on fasting Let me show you a little glimpse. What we're doing here is reversing all of type 2 diabetes and all its downstream complications with fasting. It's very different than when someone simply cuts calories. Fasting was 6 times better at getting rid of the dangerous fat. Probably the number one thing that I noticed is is weight control. I went 7 days and lost 20 pounds. I lost 40 pounds. I never gained it back. I've lost close to 100 pounds and still counting. You actually can work out harder than you've ever done. I've always worked out on an empty stomach in a fasted state. I was taking 210 units of insulin a day. I haven't had insulin since. You know, think about the fact that 100 million Americans are either diabetic or pre-diabetic. They they don't have this type 2 diabetes problem anymore. That's all they need to do. It saved my life. It's like Better than medicine. There's nothing in medicine today that can induce these effects. Yesterday I was on medication for high blood pressure as well as for cholesterol. And two weeks later she came in and her blood pressure was normal. And I'm no longer taking a statin drug. So your fatty liver is completely reversed. Anti-inflammatory. A host of autoimmune diseases. And that was in 2010 and I haven't had a headache since. The three most influential people in the history of the world Jesus Christ, the prophet Muhammad, and Buddha 
probably only agreed on one thing, and that was the power of fasting. Fasting is an essential part of our Christian faith. Christ taught it by his own example. I need to tell everybody about the fasting. I need to tell everybody because I think it's going to save sanity. I think it's going to save lives. At least in mice, fasting cycles are as powerful as chemotherapy. Continued to see that lump diminish until now it's gone. No cancer. For 21 years, I have been cancer free. Isn't it incredible? Also, every religion tells us to fast, whether it's through Rosas or Ikadashi or Good Friday. I've read rich, timeless sciences of India like Ayurveda, Naturopathy, Yoga, and they all agree on this one basic principle. Even science is proving that fasting reduces cholesterol, increases human growth hormone, and even reverses diabetes. Please see the description in the video where I've linked all such scientific studies. When you don't have to think about food till noon, you're much more productive. You get more things done in the day because you don't have to keep thinking about food. Okay, let's move on. Watch this video till the end because there's two more powerful things that I want to share with you that I learned from my masters that can really kickstart your internal cleansing. Number two is wet back. Sometimes the waste or the toxins become stagnant in our blood. They get all hard and clogged up. One of the best ways to make them circulate is through a cold wet pack. Take a white cotton cloth about 1 meter by 2.5 meters, similar to a bed sheet. Fold it into a long strip about 10 inches wide. Dip it in cold water as cold as you can easily bear and squeeze it out. Wrap it around your stomach and tuck it in so that it doesn't fall off. Your navel should lie between the strip of cloth. Take another cotton strip, much smaller this time, dip it in cold water and wrap around your forehead. Take another small cotton strip, wet it in water and wrap around your neck. If you want, wear your clothes over it and continue with any work. You don't need to sit in one place. Keep it on for about 40 minutes. You can apply it anytime, even before or after a meal. Just don't eat or drink while it is on. The wet pack is amazingly effective in digesting your food. No matter what illness you have, always apply the wet pack on all three parts, the stomach, the neck and the head, because they're all connected. If you want this already ready-made, you can order it by clicking on this box. Parts where the wet pack is applied, the body becomes cold, while the rest of your body remains warm. When two temperatures are maintained in your body at the same time, stagnant blood starts circulating and automatically the toxins are also circulated and ultimately removed when you take an enema. Which brings us to point number three. If you think you're not clogged up on the inside because you go to the bathroom every day, it does not mean you're not clogged up. Let's say you're 30 years old. Have you ever seen the plumbing pipes of a 30-year-old house? Sure, water and sewage is running through them, but after 30 years, there's so much waste accumulated in the pipe that it's difficult for anything to get through. And every day, more and more of this waste is getting stuck inside you. When you eat unnatural food, it sticks to your intestines like nothing else. You need something that outright dissolves this hard, crusty stuff. Just like the black, hard, crusty stuff that sticks to the bottom of your pans and pots. How do you get rid of it? You soak it in water. Water is a universal solvent and dissolves almost anything given enough time. So how do you get water in your intestines? Through an enema. If you have a headache, sinus congestion or any other sickness, nothing will help get rid of it faster than this and fasting. Get one that looks something like this. Some chemists carry these things but it's easier to find it online and they're very cheap. Wash it out a couple of times and then pour about 3 to 500 ml of water in your enema pot. The best place to do this is obviously a bathroom. Lubricate the tip with something natural like coconut or olive oil. Place it on something like a shelf. It needs to be higher than your butt. There are many ways to do this. Kneel down on the floor. Stick the pipe in your rectum about 2 inches. One hand holding the tip of the pipe so it doesn't fall out. Let the water empty inside your intestines. 
Then pull out the pipe, leave the enema in the sink and hold the water inside for about 10 minutes. Walk while massaging your stomach clockwise and then anti-clockwise. All the encrusted filth will start leaving its place. When you feel the pressure to go to the bathroom, you will be amazed to see how full of waste your intestines were. You'll feel so good and clean. Your energy levels will be through the roof and you'll wonder why you didn't do this years ago. This is completely safe and natural. What's unnatural is that we go from our home to our car to our office with all that waste sticking, blocking inside our system. When I was first introduced to it, I said to my master, I'll do everything that you're suggesting, but not the enema. But trust me, just once after doing it, it became normal. We never say, yuck, I don't want to brush my teeth because they're so dirty. So I say the same thing about your intestines. If you're starting to follow the IU lifestyle, do the enema once every day for the first one month. After that, do it only two to three times a week. If you have a cold, cough, fever, stomachache, or you feel ill, do it even more frequently, about two to three times a day. So I hope that by now, you know exactly what you need to do to clean your body internally, how to take the inner garbage out. I feel very fortunate to have learned these timeless principles of Mother Nature from my masters. And now it's my pleasure to share it with you. If you have any questions, please ask them in the comments below. And make sure to share this video with someone who you think might benefit from this. Goodbye for now and I'll see you in the next one.